Okay, now that we have some of the basics of geometry r related to soft gauging, what we'll look at first is how to construct the datums and datum reference frames using soft gauges. First of all, we're going to need a geometric model for a datum, and that model will obviously depend on the nature of the datum feature itself. And then secondly, as we saw in some of the uh, assignments, we'll need to construct a complete geometric model for the datum reference frame. And here we'll pay particular attention to the relationship between datums. And by that we mean the primary, secondary, and tertiary. Okay, here's a simple little design that we've seen before. And in this we have uh, datum A and datum B. Datum A you should recognize as the plane <clears throat> corresponding to this surface, and that would be at the other end, similar to what we see here. And then we have a datum B corresponding to this feature, which is the large half cylindrical slot. So just in terms of our datum reference frame, we recognize that datum B is constructed perpendicular to datum A. How would we go about doing that for a datum reference frame, first of all the individual datums, and then what is the effect on our datum reference frame? Well, to find a datum, it's not as simple as we talked about before in terms of taking the cross product between three points and a plane. For datum A in this case, we're going to take multiple points to determine where A is. And again, we've already talked about how we obtain that set of points previously. Now, based on our criteria, we're going to find the best plane. And best plane, if you recall, has to do with some type of method we'll employ to minimize deviations from the plane. And again, there are a variety of approaches we could take uh, depending upon what our goal was. For each point, we need to find the deviation from a plane. And this will ultimately correspond to the plane that is used as datum A. So we'll, perhaps we'll have points on both sides unless we're looking for the extrema uh, condition that we saw before and use some type of LP norm to find the plane. Well in order to use that LP norm we have to be able to calculate the distance from the point to the plane and from your readings hopefully you've seen how we can do that if you have a point and a uh, specification for the plane. Well, that deviation is based upon a parametric line and then a point on that parametric line and its distance to the plane. Again, we're saying here that that distance is oriented such that it's normal to the plane. Well, you can see the relationship here, F, G, and H for the parametric line is going to be the same as A, B, and C, the direction vector for this plane. And then I just need to find the point of intersection here. Once I find the point of intersection, I can find the distance. Well, it turns out, if uh, you go back and look at the reading, that the parameter t for point i is going to be essentially the substitution of the point into the equation for the plane and then divide it through by a squared plus b squared plus c squared, in other words, normalized. Obviously, if a, b, and c are previously normalized to a unit direction vector, then it just reduces to this, which actually represents the projection of this point onto the plane. So then our distance will be the difference between the two points, the point of intersection and the point that we actually measured. So d sub i is that distance, and here we just use the standard representation of distance which is based on an LP norm uh, equal to 2. And T sub i a is uh, going to be the offset uh, from the xi coordinate T sub i b. Remember T sub i corresponds to the point where we intersect the plane. And I do the same thing for z, the offset from z sub i. <clears throat> well, if you solve for that, this just reduces to T sub i times this distance, and again, if it's normalized, you can see what's going to happen. d sub i will equal t sub i. 
Well, <clears throat> if I look at this distance, again, based upon T sub i, all I have to do is minimize that to find the smallest value. Now, when we minimize this, what we're saying is that A, B, and C, and D will vary. In other words, we're going to change those values until we find this minimum sum of the distant, the deviations squared. What about finding a line? Well, for a line, we're looking at an axis here. And for an axis, we're talking about a cylinder, so we can think of taking a bunch of points on the cylinder. Now that I have the set of points, what I'd like to do is something similar to the plane, minimize deviations from the cylinder surface. Now, in order to do that, I have to know where the axis of the cylinder is. So we'll represent that as a parametric line. And then the distance from that parametric line to each of the points will be an r sub i. So if this is my parametric line, I can find the distance from each of the points to the line. Again, similar to the plane, we would be normal to the axis of the cylinder. Well, what is unknown about this parametric line? If we've already constructed the plane, and let's go back to that for just a moment. So if we've done this and we've determined what the values are based upon our criteria for A, B, C, and D, then what we can do is use that to uh, determine based upon the direction vector, we have a relationship going back to our design specification between A and B. So let's go back to that and look at the geometric tolerance. And we note that A is primary, B is secondary. So we're going to take the direction vector that we found here and use that in our relationship here so that F, G, and H will be the same because B is perpendicular to A. So really the only thing we don't know are X0, Y0, Z0, which is the point uh, again, a point on the line that locates this line in space. Note that this gives us the direction of the axis, but it doesn't tell us where the axis is located. So what we have to do is similar to the plane. Now we're going to find the distance from a point to a line. And if you go back to the reading, you'll see that that corresponds to where that parametric line from the the point to the axis intersects. And so it's going to be based, of course, on the direction vector for the axis. And now all I have to do is calculate my radial distance to the measured point, similar to what we did for the plane. And that is just going to be here again, the point on the line. And this is the point that we measured. So we take those differences and square them. So P is equal to 2 for LP norm. And now I will add up the sum of all the radii and take the average. And then my deviation is just the difference between R sub i and the average radius. Again, using my LP norm of 2, I will minimize the sum of squared deviations. And that will give us the point corresponding to x0, y0, z0. So at this stage, what we've constructed is a plane from a set of points in space. And we're assuming that we have uh, greater than four points. And then we constructed an axis for B based upon our criteria here. Again, based upon a set of points that we collected on that half cylindrical slot. Well, when you think about constructing a datum reference frame, let's first of all start with the three planes. In a classical three-plane datum reference frame, we find the primary datum, as we just did for A. And then we need to find the secondary datum, which is another plane. So we would do that similar to A. The only difference is we would constrain it such that the dot product is equal to 0. And why do we say the dot product is equal to 0? Because when the cosine theta is 0, then, of course, we're at 90 degrees, and so that maintains in the minimization that relationship. And then finally, for the tertiary plane, uh, 
Again, we would do a dot product to the secondary or the uh, primary, and again, maintain that relationship in finding that uh, plane, A, B, C, D, corresponding to the tertiary datum. So you have to take into account the constraints that are imposed by your geometric tolerance. So here's an example. We've got datum A being the plane that we just looked at, and datum B being the axis. And then we're going to construct B perpendicular to A and find the intersection. So you start with your set of sample points. From those sample points, we constructed, based upon a geometric model, the deviation, that was the d sub i, from that geometric model. So that was a, we had a plane, a line, whatever the geometric model is. And then we used our LP norm to determine the parameters for the plane, the parameters for the line, based upon minimizing the sum of square deviations when p is equal to 2. And you should also recognize the importance of datum constraints. We saw the relationship, the a, b, and c for the uh, datum plane corresponded to the f, g, and h when that line was perpendicular to that datum plane. So here we see that relationship. The other way we saw it was through the dot product. If I've got two direction vectors and they have to be perpendicular, then a dot b, of course, has to equal zero. They have to be orthogonal. So important steps here, identify your parameters. What is important in terms of your model? So I need to know the parameters that I'm trying to estimate, and those parameters are going to be used in the minimization. Then come up with the criteria for good fit. Now again, I want to remind you, this is where divergence comes about in terms of using soft gauging. So this is something that you have to agree with uh, all parties in terms of how you're going to actually uh, determine the criteria. And then finally, use some type of optimization for the parameters based on the criteria. Then we use the parameters from the primary data model to determine that related secondary and finally tertiary.